Okay, let's go ahead and discuss transferring our image with a graphite uh, transfer paper. Uh, I don't have any paper uh, available and I would probably make my own uh, anyway. It's a real simple process and I would suggest that you get an extra copy that you don't have to use. Uh, you want to have a paper that you can actually get the pencil to go on and adhere to and so uh, a slick uh, glossy paper is not going to work and I would go ahead and take my image and naturally I'm going to have to pay attention to where the image is. If you had a light table it would be helpful but or a light box but I would take my softest pencil and that's going to be our 4B and I would go ahead and use the side now. This is your opportunity to go ahead and use the side of your pencil which I tell you not to use unless there's a, an occasional technique that we need but now I would go ahead and I would get quite a bit of graphite on, graphite on here. Come out to the edges where you know you're going to want to uh, capture the picture. And the more lead on here, uh, the less you would have to press. Doesn't have to be pretty, just have pretty good coverage here. Now let's get our, our uh, paper back here. And let's go ahead and place it. We might want to find the center, that's fine, but basically what I want to do is demonstrate uh, how it transfers. Let's go ahead and get it in the middle left and right. So let's go ahead and put a little higher on the page like we were talking about. And this gives us an opportunity because this is the size we're going to work, obviously, and I did really get a good idea of where we want it for placement on the paper. So now, when I've decided that, I want to be able to make sure that I tape it down and you you want to use a tape where you're not gonna when you take it off you're not gonna damage your paper although I've given you a couple ideas about how to remove tape in some of the early uh, demonstrations you want to make sure that you're using something that doesn't have uh, uh, such an adhesive that it rips off that top surface Okay, now we're going to go ahead and have it stationary on here because once you start drawing, you're never going to get it back on track. And I want to be able to have it loose on here so that I can check and see what I'm doing. I may have to press a little harder or I don't have to press as much. I wouldn't press any more than I have to, but it's probably going to be a firm, you know, uh, uh, touch of the pencil. I'm going to get my uh, 4H pencil because it's harder. If you have a stylus or something like that that you can use, that's fine. Just make sure, again, that you don't lose that sensitivity of how much pressure you're putting on. I want to put only as much pressure as I need to go ahead and transfer this. Okay, so let's go ahead and start out with certain things that are always important to me are the eyes. So I like to start in the middle and work out. So I'm going to go ahead and press on here. And I can go ahead and give a little bit of an idea about where my eyelashes are, but don't try and get too carried away. And then you can see it transferring. Now, I'm not real happy with the amount of uh, value I have on here, and I think I'm going to put a little more. see now that I put this back down I can go right back to drawing and then I can I don't have to worry about what I, the marks were I made before you could keep reinforcing that backside if you want to uh, you know if you feel like there's places that aren't picking up and uh, and now I'm going to come in here and hopefully leave a good mark I'm going to just represent that reflection as a round shape. Primarily, that's what I uh, would suggest you use for right now anyway. And let's see if it's transferring now. Yeah, it is. So you can see what's going to happen here. I can, again, have as much as I want. I can come over here and I can just say, okay, I just want this, and I just want that, 
and I want where it meets the eye, anything you desire, you can go ahead and make it as challenging for yourself as you want. But at least, at the very least, it's going to establish the size without you having to guess and do a bunch of calculations and, you know, all this conversion and everything else. If you're not careful, there are some things that I want you to be careful about here, and if you're not careful, you won't have the advantage you think you're having anyway. And this, along with some of the other methods, there's little things that I want you to notice. I am coming in here and not drawing in the white. I'm drawing in the dark. So as a general rule, there's right away I'm going to break that rule here because there's a couple exceptions. But I draw on the dark side of a line. If I have an eye, I'm going to put my pencil in the iris, the dark part. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in the pupil in the darkest part. Every time, pick out the darkest area. Otherwise, if I try to go outside everything, which seems like it's a big... Uh, if you don't think about it, it's, it's something that happens often. Uh, then I'm going to end up by coming out to meet my line, and if I put it in the white, now that means that the iris got a little bigger and the white got smaller. Until in some pictures, the white is almost non-existent. And then you forget about that and you're drawing away, and you end up by having something that is you know, starting to be distorted or the wrong proportions or whatever. So keep the tip of your pencil in the dark. Now obviously out here that's going to be the exception and I do want to create just like with the with the uh, the template lid that we did the sphere with naturally I've created a line uh, that I'm going to come out and meet and it's very light but I don't want it to be any darker than it's going to take to uh, to come out there and see it and meet it I don't want it to dictate how much value I'm going to have to put in to make it go away. So when you're on this very light part, you want to be able to come now within her image in the light part. And that is now going to become absorbed into the value I'm going to use for her ear. I'm not going to want to come out on the outside because I think if you can understand what I'm talking about, I'm going to have to come out with my value to meet that line and now her ear got a little bigger. And it may not be that big of a thing to you, but it, accumulatively, we're going to end up with big problems. So I'm going to go on the dark side of that side of the face. And now over here, I'm going to come on the inside because now I have to go ahead and show that I know where the edge of this face is. So I'll act like it's dark. Let's see if this is transferring now. Let's see what we've got. Look at that. This is plenty for you to work with, and you can see where you can put as much or as little as you possibly want and, uh, and have as much challenge as you possibly uh, need. It's really not a bad way, uh, you know, if you want to uh, lay out your picture, you could do that or get as much detail as you want. But it's one more option for some of you who aren't uh, advanced enough or ha feel that you have the capability or the control to be able to do a freehand drawing, this is a great, great option for you to get something on the paper. And I think you probably all are familiar with what I've said about, hey, let's start out with baby steps first. So if this gets you started, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing for you to do. It's in your comfort zone. It's not so, not so hard that you start wondering about Wow, I don't even know how to work the tools yet. I'm trying to get my technique down, let alone do all this. I would keep track, kind of get used to how you would uh, uh, show a highlight. Uh, sometimes you might want to show it like a, uh, like a topo map. Uh, you know, maybe a couple different places where you might show that there's a gradation going on for a contour. But you don't want to make it so confusing that you can't interpret your picture when you go back to start drawing. So, but I do like to go ahead and, and designate highlights so I know where I'm pulling to, with just like on the sphere. I'm coming from darker to lighter, and I want to know where to fade it away so that I have a, there's a definite form that, that's there for a reason. It's the high point, the apex, and I want to be able to uh, clearly see that. But a lot of you you know, have a number of methods, and uh, maybe some of you have used this, and if you haven't, maybe this will be something you'd like to be able to think about to at least get something started. I'm 
not going to do too much with the hair. If I have a good reference point, I want to try to capture that. Like there's a little uh, sharper V, there's a little darker color. I might try to capture that. But again, I don't want to take the freedom I have with creating my hair. I want to get a sense of the direction. So there's nothing wrong with doing some of this. Let's go ahead and get the clothes are a little more forgiving too. The only reason I'd be exact about some things that don't seem that important is because it gives you something that's a, a, a constant or a, a, something you can count on for a reference point to make sure in measuring something else you've got something to play off of. And uh, surprisingly enough some of these things might even help you in the construction of a face if you know that they're accurate. I guess, did we do this here over here? Yes, we did, except for this part. And see, I can peek back there and just fill in a gap that I didn't do because it's taped down. Hairlines, at least get something established so you know where, maybe a little contour, the temple, you know, anything you decide you want to do. I don't want to uh, cause indentations though where I'm going to have uh, that influence my pencil drawing later as I go across all these little grooves and ditches. But the direction, so that later on you can come in with your 2B, which is the hair pencil, and have a little more freedom of stroke. This stuff will get covered up very easy and you don't have to uh, guess or maybe have drawn and hope you had gone a different direction. You can just go in there and, and uh, have some freedom. It's too bad that people get uh, really worried when they do the hair. There's nothing like anxiety and being nervous to keep you from doing. What I want you to do is have all the flow and grace you possibly can have in your drawings. All right, I didn't put this applique on here. Uh, just for the sake of demonstration though, that gave us a great layout. And I think this is something that you could consider utilizing. Uh, it's really quite good. You can still erase this, you know, very well because it's just laid on the surface. If I haven't really tried too hard and pressed too hard. So pay attention. If it, is it dark enough? You can, if it's too dark, you can go ahead and back off under pressure. If you need a little more graphite, you can add that on there and have some opportunity to make a few adjustments as you go. But that's uh, basically a transfer method.